better. Hi, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how you can use the Cashmere Essentials plugin in your tracks. What I think is great about the Cashmere Essentials plugin is it's broken down into five tabs, with each geared towards a specific instrument, and within that, there's only a handful of controls that you can use to get your sounds ready to go. Instead of having to set up complex processing chains, you can quickly take care of your tracks in only a handful of clicks. If you're newer to production, Cashmere Essentials gives you instant access to the processing chains that a more seasoned mix engineer might be using. For those of you that are more experienced, Cashmere Centrals gives you instant access to some common processing racks that ultimately save you time in your productions. These chains are obviously great at processing their designated instruments because it was purpose-built for it. However, they can also be applied to whatever you want because they represent a lot of fundamental utility processing that's useful for a variety of applications. So let's hop on the DAW and check out Cashmere Centrals in a mix session. I mixed this track using only some basic EQ and leveling work, and then I went in and added some effects like delay and reverb just to bring a few of the sounds a bit more to life. So let's first take a listen to this mix without Cashmere Essentials, and then we'll go back and take another listen after we've brought it in. So as you can probably hear, this plugin makes quite a difference in the final product. So let's take a look and break down how I've used it in this session. Let's start things off by taking a look at the kick here. If we take a listen before this is applied, it maybe doesn't hit super hard quite yet. Once we bring this in, it actually makes a pretty big difference. It's really bringing out that knock and that heaviness to the kick that wasn't very much there before because it was mostly relying on the sub. So I opened up Cashmere Essentials with the kick chain here, and I enhanced the sub so I tune this to the key of the song because the kick is tuned to the song, so that way I can bring up just that fundamental harmonic to really bring up that super, super low end and make the kick sound deeper than it is. Then I've got some mid here. This is really what brings out that knock, and this is a great thing not only to make the kick stand out in the mix, but also help your mix translate to smaller playback systems. Here we've got some air that adds that nice, crispy, clicky, high top frequency. Then I brought in the transient shaper here. This just makes things snappy and hit a bit harder. And brought in the tape saturation quite a bit for some really heavy aggression to this kick drum. Then I dialed in these pressure and compression knobs. So these both add different kinds of compression just to glue things together and really make this kick hit super, super hard. Because this is kind of a modern dance festival type track. So we really want things to just kind of be as loud and heavy as possible. Finally, to really bring this sound home, I brought in the soft clipper here and just started driving it up ever so slightly just to add a bit more bite to the overall sound. And this is a great feature of this plugin. One of the cool things about soft clipping is it allows you to help enhance your track's perceived loudness. So it makes it sound like it's louder without it actually being louder. So you don't have to drive your signals as hard. You can just add a bit of soft clipping and it makes them sound really upfront and in your face. So just enabling this and driving it up a little bit can add quite a bit of weight. Next, let's take a look at the main lead sound of this track. This sound also has a sphere delay and a mutant reverb on it, but I've bypassed these for right now just so we can only listen to the core sound. Without the Cashmere Essentials plugin on, it sounds like this. Which is a really big and pretty solid sound, but I think it's maybe a bit too thick and overwhelming for this track. So we need to carve it out and give it a bit more definition to sit in the mix. First off, I started by using the body and excite controls here to dial the sound in and rein it in so it's not so totally overwhelming and eating up all this space in the mix because we need to leave room for our drums and percussion and other elements. The tone shaping controls here with the presence and air make it really easy to get things to cut through and sound really bright and polished. And I think that's a really easy thing to overdo, especially when you're newer at producing is, you know, over boosting the high end or the high mids trying to make things stand out. Down here I added some details and pressure, this way it's just going to jump out a little bit more and give you that nice dialed in lead sound that kind of jumps out of the speakers at the listener. 
Finally, I used the expand and glue controls here just to rein the sound in and put it all together. And then I enabled the soft clipping. And as you can see, I drove it up pretty hard. Now this might be overdoing it a little bit, but since this is a really modern, aggressive track and we really want the lead to be the lead and kind of take center stage, that really just helped push it over the edge and get it where I wanted it in the mix. So once we bring this in, it sounds like this. And I think you could probably tell that it sounds a lot more focused and dialed in, and it seems to serve a bit more of its purpose in the track without being so overwhelmingly full band. It's dialed in and sitting where it needs to sit in order to stand out. Let's move on and talk about using this plugin on bass, because I think bass is one of the harder things to get right in your productions. It's very easy to overdo it, and it's also very easy to underdo it. Let's take a listen to this main sub bass part here without the cashmere essentials enabled. Now let's bring it in and take another listen. What I think is really great about all of these bass controls here is it allows you to get those modern floor filling bass sounds that are almost larger than life, but it still retains enough definition to where it makes sense and it doesn't sound like you just boosted the low end of something. I first started off the bass sound here like I did with the kick. I brought in the sub control, tuned it to the key of the song, and that way we're bringing up that fundamental frequency to just really make this track hit hard. Then I've got the harm X and fuzz. These are two different saturation and distortion algorithms that add a bit more harmonic content to the bass. One of the things about adding distortion and saturation to your bass, as long as you don't overdo it, is you're adding this harmonic content that helps the bass translate to smaller playback systems. So if you're playing this on some really big PA speakers, it sounds great. But if you're playing it back on like a small Bluetooth speaker or something, it's going to help translate there and still sound really nice and heavy. One of my favorite features of the bass processing chain is actually the side cut feature. And what this allows you to do is cut out the sides of the signal. And this is really important to help maintain phase compatibility on larger playback systems. This is actually really easy to visualize. So let's take a quick look. I've got this pretty much bypassed here. And if we take a listen to these intro bass sounds, we're going to take a look at the vector scope here. What a vector scope represents is the stereo image of a sound. So the wider it looks, the wider the sound is. And when it comes to bass sounds, especially in the low end, we want these to be as narrow and tight as possible. So keep an eye on this vector scope here, and I'm going to start dialing in the side cut, and you'll see that this narrows out and it starts to sound a bit more dialed in. This will probably be more apparent if you're sitting and listening on monitors or some high quality headphones, and you'll notice that now the bass sound drives right down the middle. I think another interesting use of this plugin here is actually using the vocal chain on your drums group. So I've got my drums bus together here and I use the vocal chain to process it. Let's take a listen here with the plugin bypassed. And let's bring it in and take another listen. Now we've got this really wide, punchy, bright, modern drum sound using the vocal chain. So what I've used here is the body to add some definition, clarity to add some clarity, and then air to bring up those nice crispy top frequencies. The great thing about the air control, as long as you use it subtly, is it allows you to get that bright modern sound without overcooking it because that's really easy to do. I've also dialed in some compression, pressure, and glue here, and these are different forms of compression, and this takes all of these sounds and makes them hold hands and play nice together. Then finally, I brought in the spread here just to make this sound really wide and give it that larger than life, huge drum sound. Finally, one last thing I wanted to show you is using Cashmere Essentials on your master bus, which maybe isn't something you think of doing. And in a subtle way, it can actually just help things kind of stand up and sit together and just get things sounding a bit more mixy. Right now we have a bypass, so let's take a listen to the final mix without this on the master bus. <laughs> Now let's bring it in and take another listen and listen carefully for the difference this makes. It's subtle, but it just pushes everything up a bit more and kind of adds this almost transparent lift to the whole track. As you can probably see here, I'm not really doing much of anything. I'm adding a very tiny bit of air, which just again adds this almost imperceptible lift to the top end of the whole track. Then I've got some tape saturation here, again, just going for a bit more perceived loudness. I want this track to feel really loud without having to totally crush it with my mastering chain. 
Then finally added just a tiny bit of width here just to give it that modern, larger than life, huge aggressive dance track feel. So using this in a subtle way on your master bus or even utilizing the mix control to blend the whole thing in in parallel can be a good way just again to add that subtle little bit of extra sauce to your mix. So using this plugin, that's how easy it can be to take your song from something that was an idea and an arrangement and turning it into something that feels like a production and like a record. So thanks for hanging out with me and I hope you enjoyed the video. Cashmere Essentials is available now, so to check it out for yourself or learn more, you can head over to waproduction.com.